So you had a listing, you had it under contract. The buyer throughout the course of their inspections discovered radon at what their inspector told them was a dangerous amount. That contract terminated and for a variety of reasons, you are now, your broker is now terminating the seller brokerage agreement with the seller. What is your responsibility as a licensed real estate agent in the state of Georgia? What do you have to do with that knowledge regarding the radon? Hi, everybody. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and director of the Real Estate Academy of America, here to answer that question. So that's the situation. Basically, what are the disclosure laws in Georgia for you as a licensee with respect to a latent material defect? And how do you address that when you are terminating the seller brokerage agreement with the seller? Well, first, let's talk about the laws and then stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you what you need to do as an agent to protect yourself and your license. So in Georgia, as you know, there are some disclosure laws and there are uh, caveat emptor laws for the buyer. In other words, the burden is on the buyer to also check out a property with respect to real property in the state of Georgia. Um, so as you remember from pre-license school, caveat emptor is the law of Georgia. In other words, the burden is on the buyer to check out the property um, and make sure that it satisfies, satisfies their needs before they exchange money for the property. Hence our due diligence period in the majority of our Georgia contracts. However, there is another law in Georgia, the fraud laws. It is Georgia Code 5162, when misrepresentation of material facts actionable as deceit, effective mere concealment, knowledge of falsehood, essential to deceit when knowledge is implied. What all of that has to do with is there are disclosure laws for our sellers in Georgia that they are legally required to disclose what is considered a latent material defect. And what does that mean? That is a defect with of the property that a buyer, a latent is basically a hidden problem. Um, it can be defined as a, one that could not be discovered by reasonable and customary observ observation or inspection. So in other words, um, this is a major exception to the caveat emptor rule in Georgia, which places the seller on a duty to disclose a situation where the seller has special knowledge not readily apparent to the buyer or upon reasonable course of inspection of which the seller is aware and that the buyer could be acting on. Um, in other words, the buyer would act without that knowledge where their decision, if they had that knowledge, could be something different. And so we know a seller has to disclose this. Now, there's not a specific well, I'll get to the forums in a minute. What about you as an agent? What are the laws pertaining to you, a real estate agent in the state of Georgia, holding a license issued to you by the state when you too learn about a material defect of the property that could fall under this definition of being latent or not readily observable um, by a buyer? And basically, what that is, is uh, there are, are laws. There is uh, Georgia Code 10-6A-5. It says, all adverse material facts pertaining to the physical condition of the property and improvements located on the property, that there is a requirement for you as the real estate agent to disclose that to any potential home buyers. This might include issues such as basic material defects, environmental contamination, and any facts that statutes or regulations require to disclose if the agent knows about the issues and buyers cannot discover them by performing a reasonably diligent inspection of the property. Now, back to the disclosure laws in general, just just. Okay, so let me back up. I'm getting a little bit tongue-tied, so I apologize. So as an agent, 
what do you do? So number one, you need to inform the seller of these laws. That is a great benefit to the public of working with a licensed agent, because as agents, we have knowledge of, of these laws um, that a seller might not know. So um, you public sellers out there, there are definitely, this is just one example of uh, one of the many reasons where you do benefit from working with a licensed agent. But back to the question at hand, what do you do as an agent in that situation where the uh, you had no knowledge of it, there was an inspection done by a reliable inspector and you do have reports of, in my example here, what is considered a dangerous level of radon in the house. Radon is invisible, so it's tricky. You can't see it, so to speak. Well, what you would do, even if you still have, if even if you are still maintaining the seller brokerage agreement, is you would have your seller update a seller property disclosure statement if they have already filled one out. If not, they need to disclose that. And you need to let your seller know if they don't disclose it, you are required by law that you have to disclose it as well. Now, there is no law pertaining to any specific form that this disclosure needs to be to be made on made on you know what i mean needs to be disclosed needs to use to disclose the georgia association of realtors and the re forms have several forms to help you as an agent to help your sellers disclose any latent material defect there is garth F301, Seller's Property Disclosure Statement Exhibit. F302, Seller's Disclosure of Late Material Defects and Fixtures Checklist. GAR also has F304, the Seller's Property Disclosure Statement Exhibit for a condo. F307, for lot and land. F310, for new construction. And F907, Owner's Property Disclosure Statement Exhibit for a lease. You have to disclose it in a lease situation too. In the RE forms, the RE form has RE 130 seller property condition disclosure statement. Again, there are no laws requiring what document or form a seller uses to make those disclosures. These are just some forms that would make it, that would facilitate that process uh, for a seller. Now, also while we're here, you realtors, if you are a realtor, this is also a provision of the Realtor Code of Ethics, Article 2. Realtors shall avoid exaggeration, misrepresentation, or concealment of pertinent facts relating to the property or the transaction. Realtors shall not, however, be obligated to discover latent defects of the property, to advise on matters outside the scope of their real estate license, or to disclose facts which are confidential under the scope of agency or non-agency relationships as defined by law. So then again, back to the question at hand, what do you do as an agent if you became aware of, of, of a, a latent material defect, but you are terminating the seller brokerage engagement? What do you do? How do you protect yourself? How do you protect your license and protect the seller, honestly? You still need to make the seller aware of their disclosure, and you need to be able to demonstrate that you have done this. So obviously, if you no longer are going to have the listing, you are not going to be marketing the listing, let's say on any MLS, so you won't have access to that. What as an instructor um, and as a broker, I would advise my agents to do is to send, if the seller had previously sent out the full uh, seller disclosure statement, send them a new one with the information that they uh, must update that. If they have not with the, with the new knowledge about the radon, if they have not filled that out, then I highly suggest that they would complete that you send them the shorter form, which is the GAR F302, Seller's Disclosure of Latent Material Defects and Fixtures Checklist. Now, what I suggest you do as you're terminating or even if the listing agreement, seller brokerage agreement has been terminated, you sell them that document, 
you inform them in writing that they do have a legal duty to disclose that information and you send that with by notification. Again, you would use the GAR form F816 notice or the RE form RE260 notification. You sign it, those notice forms are unilateral. So you sign it so you can demonstrate that you did um, inform the seller of their legal obligation and you have done everything that you can to disclose that when you are no longer the broker representing the seller. So the question then comes up, well, should you notify if the seller does end up listing the property with another broker, should you notify that broker? Let me know. I'm interested what you think the answer to that question is. Comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, director of the Real Estate Academy of America, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education. Bye. If you like that video, check out the one here. If you like the content on this entire channel, please click here to subscribe. I try to take even the most complicated of real estate situations and make them crystal clear. See what I did there? Real estate made crystal clear. Thank you guys so much for watching.